Hey everyone, this is a review I've been looking forward to doing. I'm really excited to let you know I got my hands on the Core i3 model of the Surface Go 3 tablet. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed, even though it's right already there. Let's get it unboxed, do a review, and uh, check out how the performance is compared to the base model Go tablet. So let's hit it. So definitely the appetizer to any review video is usually the unboxing, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, the fun part right over here. I actually have done a review on two other variations of this particular tablet here, the base model, four gigabyte model, and as well as the uh, secondary upgrade right there with the eight gigabyte model and the slightly larger uh, hard drive there, but still using the same Intel uh, CPU that the base model uses. So this one is using the iCore 3. I'm uh, expecting some uh, really good results from this uh, particular device. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what it does. We'll take a look at the box here in just a moment. This actually happens sometimes. <laughs> I have to actually just rip all this off now, unfortunately. Just looking at the back here, you can definitely see again. 10th generation Core i3 processor. The majority of the packaging here is actually paper now instead of plastic, I guess with the exception of the outside portion, portion right over there. Just looking around here, let's take this off here as well. Before, I believe on the uh, GoTo tablets and others, uh, I believe it was some sort of like cloth looking material, which was a uh, pretty nice to actually reuse. So even though it's unfortunate they're not using it anymore, it is uh, obviously more environmentally nice to be using uh, just this as, instead of a uh, plastic here that just goes to waste. And here is your device. Go ahead and take a look at that in just a moment. Fortunately, it's not powering on. Let's see what other goodies actually came with this. I'm kind of guessing this comes with a slightly better, like the 45 watt charger, as opposed to the uh, base model that comes with like a smaller charger, like a brick kind of looking charger. And actually it looks like it still has the same uh, little charger right over here. So 24 watt charger here. I was kind of hoping it will come with maybe with a 45 one since uh, this is a slightly more powerful device. Um, not the case here, but no big deal. I actually have a few of those. And the laptop will just not, the, lap, the tablet will just not charge as quick. And in here, just a little bit of uh, documentation. Nothing too crazy. You can actually see here, Go 3. And some other little device uh, booklet right over there as well too. The color of this particular tablet matches my Surface uh, Pro 7 Plus, which I've also done a review as well too. Kind of do like the color a little bit better than the uh, platinum or silver looking color. Uh, this is my preference right over here. Down here you can actually see the uh, little connection here for the keyboard. Uh, the You're basically your Alcaterra touch keyboard with uh, lit keyboard uh, backlit keys and touchpad as well too. There's no ports on the left side over here, but looking at the right side, you can actually see is the connection for your power connector right over here, the Microsoft Power uh, Surface Power Connector. Over here we have a USB-C connector as well too and your standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack as well too. Kind of interesting that uh, this particular model still actually has that. We'll see what happens in future models as well too. Looking back here, we don't have any other connections under here, just the Microsoft logo, some information over here, probably a serial number. And we do have a little micro SD slot right over here as well too. I believe Microsoft is actually doing away with these slots. Since uh, future generations of pros and other devices, now have removable hard drives and a little, uh, basically a little slit, usually over here or on this side over here. So kind of making this uh, not so useful anymore, which is really nice to be able to actually swap out the hard drive, but not in this particular model, maybe in the next generation. All right, let's go ahead and get ready for first boot. I did go ahead and plug it in, um, just in case I need a little bit of battery power, which uh, quite possibly it may have. So go ahead and power this thing on and let's see. Good old Windows logo right there. I am actually really looking forward to seeing uh, what the capabilities are of this particular tablet here with the faster processor, um, decent size SSD, 
um, and also speed as well too. Uh, one little difference that people may not be aware of between the base model and the upgrade models of the Surface Go 3 is that the base model uses basically this uh, type of uh, memory as opposed to an actual solid state. And uh, that memory speed is like not even the, uh, the like half the speed of uh, an actual SATA SSD, so like 250 megabytes uh, read and write. Not too impressive there at all, and you definitely do see it um, in a video review when I compare the base model to an 8 gigabyte model uh, side by side. Wanted to jump back here just for a moment and just let everyone know that if anyone's wondering if that little trick to bypass connecting to a network and uh, being forced to create a Microsoft account in the Windows 11 Home still works, it definitely does. Actually, they go ahead and was able to plug in a little little touch tap keyboard just temporarily, which I'll show you later. And uh, actually, uh, in this case, I hit Alt F4 and the window immediately just skipped over to this, just the terms and conditions and whatnot. It seems like uh, I'm all set. We actually see here, seems to be working just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and just create an account. Turn off all this creepy stuff over here, just my personal preference, to be honest. If you need any of this stuff, probably you can go ahead and leave it on here or just better off, turn it on later. Here we are online, and uh, actually I was thinking for a moment there that maybe some drivers need to be downloaded and whatnot, but I almost forgot this actually came directly from Microsoft, so it looks like we're all set. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some updates uh, pending and whatnot, especially if this thing uh, has been in the box for some time now. Uh, the time and date is actually wrong, so it's a sign right there. So let me go ahead and process some updates and whatnot, and uh, let's see if I can actually just open up uh, Task Manager. Keyboard does come up pretty quick. Struggling there for a moment. It's like fighting me. Why don't you want to open Task Manager? Is it something you guys just don't want me to use anymore? <laughs> and here we see the Core i3 processor and that's a little four core glory. Tablet so far right now is actually getting a little bit warm, but mind you, I am charging it and using it at the same time. So this thing's technically gonna get a little toasty um, here and there. It's right now at 22% battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and process some updates and uh, let's go ahead and see if I can uh, get some stuff. Uh, use the selfie cam, take a look at some other options it has here. Obviously all this, uh, these icons here, just a little bit of a uh, Windows 11 version of bloatware. It's ready to download once I connect to the internet. Uh, and I'll go ahead and take care of all that, make it look nice and pretty. Everything actually looks pretty nice. Uh, once you connect to the internet, I'm pretty sure you can just open up Edge and just be on your way right there. I'll go ahead and install some software like Office and uh, see how low times are, how this uh, little device works with multiple applications, which I'm expecting to actually should pretty much deal with it pretty well. And uh, I don't think this will be a disappointment. Definitely not gonna be as powerful as a, uh, one of the uh, Surface Pros, like seven to eights and nines nowadays. Um, but previously uh, the Surface Pro uh, line actually had uh, Core i3 models. And I'm guessing this is probably gonna approach that particular speed, particularly being the uh, 10th generation. I um, actually was really hoping last year that Microsoft would go ahead and update their generation of Go tablets, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So I'm really looking forward to see if they're going to have release a fourth generation with uh, 12th or 13th generation Intel processors, or maybe even Ryzen. <laughs> that would be even better. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, 
and uh, see how it works. So as you can see here, there's actually a lot of updates that need to be downloaded, and uh, some of them actually firmwares. <laughs> so uh, interesting, things probably have to reboot at least two or three times and uh, update its firmware and whatnot, which is always a scary little process on these particular devices, but it needs to be done, and I'll go ahead and just let it be. Glad I actually ran those updates for Windows 11 here, because one feature that's been added uh, sometime in the last few months or last year is the task manager is now a little option here when you actually right click on the taskbar down here which is very useful. I did actually go ahead and create a little icon here for it anyway but just a little thing that drove me nuts in Windows 11 for it looks like they finally took it seriously and uh, just added that option here. Speaking of which, uh, I went ahead and installed all the available updates for Windows 11 which actually took quite some time but I'm guessing some really big updates actually uh, kicked in as well too. I would say the whole process probably took just a little under an, an hour. Uh, it was plugged in the entire time, so the battery pretty much charged up almost to full, maybe around 85 to 90%. Right now it's at 87% right over here. This little uh, area here changed quite a bit. Now, generally speaking, I actually don't use Windows 11 myself, so some of the features here have changed a little bit, kind of like uh, throwing me into a little bit of confusion, but it seems like I kind of get the gist of it. My battery saver option is over here. Uh, option to turn off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, all that good stuff is over here as well too. Here of course is your sound. The one thing I don't like or don't really see unless you actually go here, so now it becomes like a two-click process is if you actually click on the battery, only here we actually see very details of how much battery, uh, you know, usually it'll actually just tell you how much uh, the battery power of this 86% will actually last you approximately in terms of time, hours, minutes, etc. And I just don't really see that option here unless I actually go ahead and go into this area, which is a little cumbersome, but not the end of the world. Uh, again, this is just Windows 11, so I do have some little plans for this uh, particular tablet. But all right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. I did actually go ahead and install Office. I also installed a little corporate uh, antivirus right over here by Symantec, just for fun. Uh, I'm not particularly a big fan of uh, the Microsoft antivirus software, but you know, feel free to use it. It obviously comes with operating systems and very useful to just protect you against general stuff and threats like that. Uh, you can see that all the updates have sucked up a little bit more of space here, so I added 120 gigabytes. Uh, right now here, it looks like we're looking at about 82, 83 gigabytes um, free to use. Again, don't forget, you do have the expandable micro SD slot in the back, which is limited because uh, unfortunately, um, even though you can probably get some good, uh, a good size uh, micro SD slots, 256, 512, I think you can even go higher than that. Um, they're not particularly the fastest little things around, but if you're gonna go ahead and put some music and you know movies and other stuff like that, TV shows to binge watch on an airplane or whatnot, uh, area where there's really no internet, so you really can't access Netflix and other stuff like that, Amazon Prime. Uh, actually a really good place to actually have movies and uh, watch stuff there. I've, I've uh, done it myself many, many times, seeing movies on uh, planes and whatnot. So I, do actually, I did actually also go ahead and install Microsoft Office, like the full version. In this case, uh, 2019. I know there's newer versions, and of course, 365. I just went ahead and tossed in this. I didn't actually activate it because, I, like I said, I do have some future plans for this tablet, so I'm not going to go ahead and put an account in here at this time. Excel and Word seem like they open up pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and just close Word and just reopen it. Um, I don't really feel I'm feeling the full potential of this particular device just yet, um, so I really just have to go ahead and actually use it for a number of days to really get the good feel of it. So, but you can actually see. Go ahead and bring up Task Manager. You can see here that so far battery uh, battery power, the memory is actually uh, just a little under 50%. CPUs are uh, being used. I definitely do see quite a bit of a difference in terms of startup times and boot up times. Go ahead and just uh, just for fun, go ahead and start this up. Give it a good reboot right over here. See how long it actually takes.
So it wasn't actually timing it, but it did actually feel like it was about a minute, maybe just a little bit more there. I'm um, not sure if there's anything. I did actually reboot this uh, device a couple of times after all the updates were installed and I do not have a windless update to run automatically. So I don't believe anything is really going on in the background. I don't, let me just see here. Open up task manager, see how much junk we have in startup. Not too much for the most part. Some stuff that you can actually see here, I did go ahead and disable or remove Cortana's completely disable, even though Cortana's actually gonna be removed altogether at some point in the future, according to Microsoft. So let's go ahead and reopen uh, Word and Excel. I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, Edge as well too. You can see they're already open, obviously asking me for a product key, no big deal. And they actually open up pretty quick. Um, definitely not as fast as, uh, let's say my Surface Pro uh, 7 Plus, but much, much faster than, you know, say the base model of the uh, Surface Go uh, 2 or Go 3 that I previously reviewed. I definitely do see a big difference there almost immediately. Um, got multiple uh, programs here open. Gonna go ahead and just open some other stuff as well too. You can immediately see that no problem at all. PowerPoint, which I haven't even opened at all, uh, just popped up almost immediately. I'm gonna go ahead and close that, you know, new presentation. So if you're actually looking for a device um, to really use on the go, uh, but you obviously you just want something a little bit smaller, um, definitely it does uh, pack a punch in terms of power, uh, how much uh, it can actually use. This actually might be the device for you, and I'll definitely do a follow-up video uh, a good week from now on uh, basically how the how basically this thing is doing for me uh, several days later after using it on a daily basis. My particular Go tablet, um, I, de I do use on a daily basis just for binge watching videos, uh, just browsing the internet for some random stuff, you know, looking at stuff on YouTube. Uh, basically, I take it to work and uh, watch little videos off it while eating lunch. What I do have in mind using here is setting up an uh, email and Outlook um, and uh, possibly just some other stuff. I do not plan to use Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro or anything uh, other uh, editing software like that. Maybe I might give uh, Photoshop a shot and might even toss in uh, Adobe uh, Fresco as well too to actually uh, mess around with some drawings. Maybe my nephews will want to play on this for a little bit. I may or may not actually get into that but I just want to go ahead and give the ballpark uh, basics over here, just how uh, interesting this device actually runs. That being said, let's go ahead and toss on a YouTube video. Maybe I'll uh, post on um, one of the little travel videos I recently posted earlier in the year from my uh, trip through Europe. And uh, just because it's going to be my own video, I am going to go ahead and turn on Adblock. I just think it's... Uh, Kind of silly for me to actually uh, see ads on my own videos if I'm the one playing it. That's just me. <laughs> I did actually play this video before on this. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on 1080. Full screen it. And again, all the other applications are still open. And you can actually see it is running pretty well. I'm going to put up the volume a little bit. The volume's actually pretty good. Mind you, this these are very tiny speakers over here and over here. So don't expect wonders. But it actually does sound pretty good. And the picture, as you can see here, is uh, amazing for, for 1080. Um, and of course, not at this moment, not running off any AC power. So right now the CPU is probably running a little bit more optimized for uh, battery preservation and um, probably running the CPU is probably being throttled just a little bit more often than usual. Let's go ahead and try to push this up to 1440, 60 frames per second. Now my Go 2, Go 3 uh, base model tablets will immediately, with the Intel uh, CPU they have in there, the Pentium one, will immediately start uh, skipping here and there on this uh, particular 1440 video or even higher 4K. Uh, not that you can really watch uh, 1440 or 4K too much here anyway. I believe the max resolution on this is 10, uh, 1080 anyway, but 
Pretty impressive, uh, running off battery and absolutely no sign of just wearing down and, and feeling like this is too much to actually play. So I want to be, be risky and try to push it up to 4K. All right, the video is running at 4K right now. You can actually see that there. Working without a hitch. Very, very impressive. I can imagine how much battery power this is actually using right now. Um, just out of curiosity, let's jump out of here and see what task manager is telling us. And you can, you can see the CPU usage is bouncing between 30, 60, and I even saw it at 100% a moment ago, maybe just because it was opening task manager. CPU is at 38. So I'd say the 30s, and uh, it is actually using some of the GPU here, which is good. So, you know, it's, it's definitely doing its job. Um, Wi-Fi, obviously, who cares? This is probably not using much. Memory is at just a little over 50%. Sorry about that. Go ahead and bring up the window again here. Let's jump back in the middle. And again, still running at 4K and not a single hiccup. So, I'm really looking forward to using this particular device and seeing what it can actually do. Playing uh, just some MKV video files. Uh, maybe even might challenge it with a 4K uh, movie at some point, um, which may or may not work because considering the amount of space this thing can hold, 4K movie <laughs> may not actually fit. Hence, micro SD slot. Before I jump out of the YouTube, one thing I immediately noticed on my base model tablets, uh, Go 2 and Go 3, jumping between full screen, even if I'm just at 1080, I'm gonna jump back at 1080, and actually usually I watch my videos at 480 just to conserve battery power and not kill the CPU usage so much. There's always a little bit of a lag. Jumping between full screen and just uh, the regular windowed mode over here. And uh, I know def I definitely do not notice that in here, which is very, very impressive uh, so far. So uh, the only other device I actually have that does not demonstrate uh, that basically, you know, goes back and forth flawlessly is my uh, Pro 7 Plus. So it looks like the CPU here, the processor is really making a difference and showing off its uh, power um, over the, the base model Pentium CPUs that are shown on the uh, Go2 and Go3 base models. Let's see how fast this device uh, boots up if I actually shut it down. And as you know, there's usually a little bit of a difference, time difference, because when you shut down, some of the OS is actually saved in memory using very, very little battery power over time. And uh, let's see how long it actually takes to boot up. It's always hard to tell when the thing is fully off. Uh, I can sometimes tell because there's always a little bit of a, the screens that, you know, ever so slightly on. But I think it should pretty much be done now. So let's go ahead and power it back on. My base model uh, Go2 tablet uh, does take quite a while to actually boot up from, not quite a while, but, um, I would say a good, uh, definitely over 20 seconds, and you can actually see this uh, model is pretty much already at the welcome screen now. Mind you, uh, I am going to be doing another video with this particular tablet, seeing how it runs Windows 10, and it's only good to compare this to that tab tablet when I am running them both on the same operating system. But if you're curious about Windows 11, so far things are running pretty well. If you're curious about some other stats regarding this tablet here, the uh, Go 3 uh, series here, you can see the max resolution here is 1920 by 1280, so a little bit higher than uh, 1080. Um, and uh, 
one little thing I actually like to do on this is just my personal preference. The scale right now is at 150% for good reason because if you put this at, at standard 100%, everything just might be a little too small. It's almost like just having 100% on the 4K 60-inch uh, screen, even everything there might look a little too small. But I usually like to go in between to 125. Uh, everything here still might appear a little bit smaller, but a little bit more convenient when navigating certain things um, here and there, particularly on the internet, and I actually do use that on my base model Go uh, 2 tablet as well too. Um, so just a little thing I wanted to demonstrate here in case you're curious. And again, um, let's go ahead and jump into Task Manager. And go ahead and take a look at everything there. You can actually see the uh, the GPU that's actually built into this. There's a little bit of uh, four gigabytes of uh, GPU memory right there, which is actually pretty uh, not bad. Um, the wi the Wi-Fi card on this particular device. Once we jump into Device Manager, I'll go ahead and do that. Great. Now I have two. <laughs> Taking a look more, there's your display card, the Intel UHD Graphics 615. Uh, if you're curious about some other stuff, some uh, other details here that are pretty interesting, the Intel Wi-Fi uh, right over here as well too, Wi-Fi 6. Looks like just a standard NVMe Express controller. Let's bring up some numbers here. I went ahead and installed the Crystal Disk Mark right over here and do a little bit of a benchmark of the the SSD that's actually in here very likely like an NVMe built into the main board of this particular device so let's go ahead and just do a one cycle here still running off battery at this time Jumping into the benchmark here, we, are, we do see the read speeds about a little over a gig and a half uh, megabytes, uh, basically uh, 1600 megabytes per second. Write speeds are pretty slow, 370 megabytes a second, so a little bit of an odd uh, per, disproportional thing right there. But uh, still a pretty good uh, read speed for sure when it comes to... Um, just looking at this uh, little tablet here. I, I did uh, see very similar speeds or just ever so slightly slower speeds on the uh, eight gigabyte model of this particular uh, Go, T uh, Go 3 tablet. Base models I mentioned earlier, it's a uh, very, very slow sort of memory, not even an SSD that runs like 250, 250 read write, which is uh, really not that great. And uh, this then definitely shines out against it. So I'll be doing some more benchmarking tests and whatnot when uh, I, do toss, possibly toss Windows 10 on this, and that'll be a whole other video, so definitely look out. A couple of more uh, little follow-up reviews on this particular device here. So, jumping into some final thoughts and conclusion regarding the i3 model of the Surface Go 3 tablet. Uh, looks pretty impressive. Uh, numbers actually look uh, pretty good. Uh, did seem some pretty good performance, uh, particularly uh, having multiple windows open. I actually did go ahead and install Firefox as well here too. Had both browsers open, one watching a video, another one playing music while working on a Word document. So very um, light to moderate kind of use going on here. The processor definitely does allow uh, more workload and whatnot. The eight gigabytes definitely helps in that as well too. But don't expect too much of a workhorse device. Um, you're not going to be 
uh, using Adobe Premiere Pro, maybe photoshopping too much on this device. Uh, I can definitely see uh, Adobe uh, Fresco running pretty well here on this device, especially if you have the little pen uh, or even just some other stylus or just using your finger. Definitely the best little stylus right there. And uh, being able to actually do some pretty good drawings and production here and whatnot, doing logos, uh, definitely no problem at all here. Even the uh, eight gigabyte model will definitely do the trick there as well too. This uh, would be a pretty good companion, travel companion, just for light use, checking email, uh, having applications ready to go, and uh, having the browser open and watching a watching a video, just been binge watching, uh, you know, Netflix, listening to Spotify and whatnot. Seems like this will re pretty much do the trick. However, uh, I was able to get this tablet at a bit of a discount, over a hundred uh, or a hundred dollars or so off the Microsoft site. So uh, with a retail value of uh, or retail price, a little over six hundred dollars. It might be a little bit of a steep investment, especially if you're going to be using something that has a little bit more power and not just something that's a base model like my go-to tablet that, again, I just use to just watch uh, some YouTube videos and just browse nonsense on, uh, you know, watch something at work and whatnot. So if you're really looking for a little uh, small, lightweight uh, travel companion, this is an option. But if you're really looking for more, a little bit more power, you might be interested in the lower tier uh, Pro family, the Pro 8, Pro 9, even Pro 7 Plus, as I got my hands on. Uh, the older generations are definitely a little cheaper. If you uh, do want to get them uh, refurbished or even just off Microsoft, I do know a 7 Plus is available. Eights are definitely being phased out, uh, probably cheaper as well too. Um, but those particular devices starting at around like 800, 799, 899 or so, might be a little bit of a better investment to some degree if uh, that's what you're really looking for, for some power. Um, so just uh, a little bit of a thought there. However, do not underestimate this uh, really uh, small and yet pack, packs a punch little device. Hope everyone enjoyed this video so far. Let me know if uh, you have any comments, as I said earlier. Sure, like and subscribe if you want to go ahead and wait and uh, expect those follow-up videos as well too. As I said, I'll probably toss Windows 10 on this and see how that works out as well too. So thanks again for watching everyone. Really do appreciate it. And as always, stay safe, take care. Bye-bye.